Hello everyone and welcome to the Cult of Paint channel. My name is Andy and today I'm going to be taking you through a tutorial on how to do a painted on fur effect. In war games and display models there are a lot of animals and creatures that have some kind of fur texture. Often this is sculpted on and we can use techniques like washes and dry brushing to pick out this detail. Sometimes the miniatures don't have any sculpted fur. Often this is on cavalry, such as horse models. And here today we're going to be using the Cult of Paint Wolf miniature from our Deoguard Kickstarter. Now we chose this model to have some sculpted fur and some fur not sculpted on purpose. This is because we believe the painted on fur effect is something that can look really fantastic and we don't like you to be limited by the sculpted on texture. So this tutorial is gonna show you how we can use this painted on effect and you'll be able to use that for the wolf miniature itself and any other miniature that has this kind of plain texture where we need to create some fur. It can take a reasonable amount of time as we need to paint on these individual hairs, but I think it's quite enjoyable to do and the overall effect is worth it. I've used this on some of my gaming miniatures, like my Kanothi in Underworlds, and I've also used it, of course, on this display model, the wolf. So let's dive in and start this tutorial. I started with a Chaos Black Primer. If you're going for a white wolf, you could use a grey one, but I'm going to start with the airbrush to build up the foundation. So I'm going to start off by airbrushing a couple greys just to get things going. I'm going to be using a Scale 75 Petroleum Grey and I really like this colour because it has a slight purple tinge. So it's a little more interesting than a regular grey. Uh, you can see as it's wet, you can really see the purple tint uh, which isn't as obvious when it's dry. So I'm quite happy to show you it uh, wet here and you can see the reason I'm using it. If you wanted to do this by brush, you just need to take your time and base coat it. Obviously I have an airbrush, so I might as well use it just to get things going. The other option is use a grey primer, like I said. Now I'm going to give it a little bit of a highlight using Games Workshop Storm Vermin Fur. Again, I'm using this colour because it's not a boring grey. It's Got a little bit of brown in this one, so again, we're just building up lots of different colours. I'm spraying this in general from above, but I'm not looking for a particularly strong highlight, as most of the highlighting is going to come from our brushwork. You can see on this other angle, me building up the colour, and I'm holding the wolf at such an angle that it's really getting everything that faces upwards. So we're going to leave a little bit of the shadow colour below, but we're mostly painting it this Storm Vermin fur colour. It does give us a nice head start because it will pick out some of the hairs that really stick out. It's a really nice sculpt this because I think it has the right combination of sculpted detail and plain areas like on the body. And I'm going to show you how you can sort of seamlessly blend those together when we do the brush painting. So that's what it looks like with the Storm Vermin fur completely dry now. You can see there's a little bit of shading on from below. If you want to enhance this, we can go back to the base coat and spray from below. I often find that spraying the shadow colour after from below gets a better result, and it's to do with how much the airbrush covers each area. I didn't really need to do this, but I want to demonstrate this to you as an option. And you can also dilute the paint further than normal as you just want to adjust and bring some of those shadows in. We don't need particularly good coverage. Now we're going to begin the brushwork. I'm starting off with Storm Vermin Fur and I've added some Vallejo Pale Blue Grey to it. I'm using the Pale Blue Grey again to add another tone, a slightly colder Blue Grey. On this part, I'm following the sculpted work so you can see I'm just following those lines and going with the flow. I'm using quite a small brush here. 
that's actually because uh, I was waiting for some new ones to arrive. I'd probably use something like a size one for this because it means you can have quite a lot of paint in the brush and you don't have to go to the palette too often. Later on I got some new brushes and you see I'll use a bigger brush but for now I just wanted to get on with the model so I'm using this small one. The point's good so I can get some very nice fine lines but it's just gonna you can see me going back to the palette quite often. So here you can see me painting on the plain area so this hasn't got the sculpted texture and this is where the technique really comes in. We're trying to do some lines that follow the flow of the fur, but you don't want them all to be perfectly straight. Try and have a little curve of them, as you can see me do here, and a little flick at the end on some of them can look really cool too. It takes a little practice, this, and don't worry if you can't get your lines super fine. You can always go back and forth and uh, adjust it later. As long as your paint's diluted enough, and you're not building up actual texture of paint, then you can make it look good. So you can see it's reasonably time consuming, but ultimately it's worth it. And on this model, there isn't really much else to it. Once we've done all the fur, we just have to do a few details, like the teeth and the eyes. So I think it's worth spending the time on this. And already with the first layer, I think it's beginning to look fantastic. I'm just moving gradually up and, and working my way around. You can see I'm not doing all the lines perfectly even and some sort of tail at the end and do little flicks and curves and that helps to give that natural look. You can see I'm building up some light as well. The other thing we're trying to do is give a light source on this model. So we're going to build up the highlights as we build up the fur texture at the same time. I need to bring in some colour on this side though, so I'm going to repeat that until I'm kind of happy. It's going to be a lot of repetition in this video, but I'd like to show you just how sort of long it takes to do this kind of thing. I think it's really important to understand the pacing and the time it takes to get these great effects because often we can see these tutorials and uh, not really understand the, uh, the time we need to spend. I think this first layer takes the longest. Um, as you can see here, that's me finished now and this took quite a long time. But when we build up the next few stages, it gets faster and faster because we need to do a smaller area. You can see I've left a little bit of shadow on the underside of the body and I'm building up the light to focus on the top. So now I'm moving to a lighter colour and I've got my bigger brush, so I've got a size 2 now. And I'm, I've basically made a kind of pinkish tone here. So you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I wanted to use some interesting colours, so I used the scale 75 sandalwood mixed with a little bit of graphite grey um, and this is just to simulate some kind of maybe sunlight hitting it but I tried to include as many different colours and nuances as possible because I find it's more interesting to look at in the end. If you want to keep to plain greys you could just use something like the graphite grey on its own. You can actually do it in plain colours and use glazes or techniques like that to add colour later. But you can see with this step I'm focusing more on the upper areas so I'm trying to build that light source with that different colour and just focus on the top. The trick is to control the density of each of these hairs. In the upper areas you don't want too strong a shadows or big gaps because uh, you want it to look like a a large volume of hair but with some detail in there as well. And you'll kind of get that as you try it out and you can always uh, balance it. So here you can see I'm focusing on the upper areas of the, the face 
and I'm just trying to pick out individual hairs. I worked quite generally to start with, covering almost everything. And as I move through the brighter colors, I'm going to be using uh, smaller areas. So that's what it looks like with that step done. And you can see we're getting much more of a light source now, uh, especially along that body. I've been quite solid. So it looks like, you know, um, one light is hitting that upper body. So you don't get the separation of the shadows until you get the lower part there. But hopefully you agree the slight pink tone makes it more interesting. And uh, I definitely think it's worth it in the end. On the other side, I have a little more contrast as if less light is hitting it, but the same light on that upper part there. Just the lower legs are a lot darker. There's probably too much definition on this side, so it's quite nice to show you uh, what it looks like compared to the other side. So we're going brighter still, and I just took my previous mix and I've added some salmon rose to it, which is a, a very pale pink, kind of an off-white pink color. Again, you could add a neutral color if that's your preference. You can see it's not really, really pink. It's just a subtle variation. And now I'm picking out individual hairs on the top. So that's why we painted quite a solid block in the upper area on the previous stage, because now we're doing a brighter tone. Now we can pick out those individual hairs. If you have, you know, too strong a shadows in this upper area, I think it looks a little too defined. But now you can see it's looking like a white wolf and we have that nice pink tone running across the top of the body. And personally, I'm, I'm really happy with how this is looking. I'm going to show you what you can do to soften some of the areas. So I've just taken that same paint and you can see me adding a kind of thin layer and I'm painting this like a normal brush stroke. And this is to just kind of take away some of the definition and act as if light is hitting across the top of the fur. And I can add a little bit to the top of the leg there too. So I'm really happy with the overall contrast and the texture on this wolf. Just gonna show you a few more steps where I basically adjust it. So I'm just adding a few more highlights to the top of this leg and it's a constant balance of definition, light, and the texture. And when you haven't done this before, you will need to go back and forth, but it's, it's quite fun just doing little lines. I didn't do this in one go. I think it took me uh, three evenings to finish this wolf, but I did find it quite relaxing and enjoyable because it was just painting lots of little lines and, uh, and once it started to look quite effective, I was uh, pleased and it was enjoyable to finish. So you can see me adding just uh, a few more highlights here in that center part and adding some lines too. I finish with quite a bright color which is going to be some light flesh, and I kept a little bit of the salmon rose in. So this is an, an off-white for sure, and it's keeping in that pink hue, so it feels like some kind of sunset light is hitting it. And I'm using this to just pick out some of the real details around the face. I needed to be quite sparing with this, otherwise it became too white looking. So there you have it. That is my finished wolf. To tell the truth, I'm probably going to adjust a few more things, maybe add some more color and uh, improve it a little. But as far as the tutorial goes, I think I've shown you everything. Uh, hopefully you agree. This is a really cool looking effect and it's not particularly difficult in terms of theory. We just need to take our time, paint some fine lines. I think the most important things are that you're 
lines are irregular, slightly wavy, have little tails at the end, and you build up the light as you build up each layer of hair. This will take some getting used to, to get the balance of definition and volume right, but once you get to grips with it, it's so effective and it's so versatile. There's a lot of this texture that turns up on miniatures. Like I said, loads of models have horses. Um, my Kanothi had uh, obviously deer legs. So it's a technique I'm really happy to share with you and hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial. If you're interested in how I did the base, that's a very long tutorial over on our Patreon page. And I'll also be painting the other miniature that goes with this, which is the Hunter from our Kickstarter. And I'll probably share that project when it's completely finished and she's on this base too. And once again, thanks for watching. Please leave a comment if you like this technique, like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, see you then.